watch the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I have tried Xmonad a couple times. I've made a couple videos on it, and those videos are very entertaining if you enjoy watching me fail utterly. Those, <laughs> they're not good videos. They're, they were made when I first started the channel, so I, believe it or not, I have gotten a little bit better at making videos. <laughs> it doesn't really show, but it, um, Go back and watch some of the early ones. You'll know that I was really bad at those. Um, I'm not even sure if that was when I had a camera or not. I'm not sure. I can't really remember. Uh, be that as it may, I've used Xmonad a few times, but I've never made it past the process of installing it and using it for like a half an hour and then giving up because I just could not get my head around Haskell. But this time it's going to be different. Or at least it was going to be different. Uh, I think it's going to be different. I don't know if it's going to be different. <laughs> Uh, I've switched to Xmonad, I, and I'm using it right now, and I'm going to show you a few of the things that I've done, and I'm going to talk about a few of the problems that I've had. So I've been using it now for a day. And uh, like I said, I'm, I've had some problems, and I'll talk about those towards the end. But first, let's, meet, let's talk about some of the successes I've had. So let's jump in. Okay, so this is Xmonad. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that I'm using Polybar, and I'll talk a little bit more about the bar situation at the end. But... I decided when I was going to do this that I was going to create my own configuration file instead of using someone else's. A lot of the times when I switch to something new, a new window manager, I'll take like DT's configuration and I'll use that, or I'll take Luke Smith's configuration and I'll use that, and that's how I'll learn. This time I decided I was going to go ahead and go from the default Xmonad configuration file and build it up so that it's mine completely. And I've done that. So um, none of what I've done so far has been from anybody else. It started directly from the Xmonad default config, and I've built it up from there. So if I actually open that up, and I can show you. I've added some imports here that I've needed to, needed to add in order to do like auto star and uh, a few things that were supposedly meant to help me use Xmo bar, but again, I'll talk like talk about that later. Uh, I've changed the terminal, which I'm still using Alacrity, and I've changed the mod key, and then I've added a couple uh, key bindings, one for Rofi, and I've changed the key binding to close windows and to close Qtile and to restart Qtile. I've done all that kind of stuff, and I've also gone through and added all of my down here, where is it? I've also gone through and added all of my auto start stuff. So I've auto started Nitrogen, Pycom, SXHKD, and Polybar in this case. Now, the SXHKD is interesting because I wanted to have to go, because I wanted to have it so that I didn't have to go through and import a whole bunch of key bindings for my application. So like I wanted to be able to keep my key bindings for Todoist and Audacity and Zim and all these things that I use all the time outside of the Xmonad config. I didn't want to have to put them in the Xmonad config. So uh, one of the problems I had the first time I used Xmonad was I tried to use X SXHKD and couldn't actually get it done. This time it's worked just fine. Now those are the things that I've done to customize it so far. That's literally as far as I've gone. Uh, the rest of my time that I've spent the last day has been messing around with the bar. Now, I wanted to use Xmo bar. I watched DT's introductory or tutorial video, and he walks through how to set up Xmo bar, you know, first time. So I did that, and it wouldn't show up. And but when I say it wouldn't show up, I don't, I don't mean that the windows were on top of it and I just couldn't see it and switching to a different desktop without something on it would have shown me the bar. I'm saying it didn't show up and I was getting an error and I don't know what the error mean. I tried to get on Reddit and find out and I didn't get much help so I'm not sure exactly what it means. So I've tried multiple things. I've tried now this is the, the this right here is the way uh, DistroTube said to do it here and that wouldn't show up and I can actually probably comment this out now because I'm using polybar but I've also tried to go through and just start Xmo, Xmo bar up here in the startup hook that also didn't work uh, when I go through and try to run Xmo bar 
So if I kill all polybar, and then I try to run xmobar like this, I get absolutely nothing, and I get this error here. What that means, I don't know. Uh, the answer I got on Reddit was that it's some kind of Arch Linux error. So I tr thought, well, you know, I'll install the one that came from the Arch repository and install the one from the AUR. I couldn't get the one from the AUR to build. Uh, I'm thinking about downloading it from like GitHub and maybe building it that way, but I'm not sure how to go about doing that. Like, because it's written, I think it's written in Haskell, so I'm not sure how to build things from source in Haskell. That's something I'd have to learn. So the the bar has been uh, a pain in my ass, and even with so if I see if I can restart Qtile or restart Xmonad now, and the polybar is not actually going to show up again. We can see if we can. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, so so my bar is gone for the duration of the because I can't get to restart, but that's okay. Uh, even with Polybar, I've been having problems. So, like, it took me a while to figure out how to get the workspace numbers to show up. You have to import a certain library to get those to show up. And I've gotten that done, but the way it shows the numbers, like, I can't show you now because it's disappeared, but uh, the way the numbers are, show up don't really work all that well with m dual monitors. So it, the one, the workspace that is highlighted is always the one workspace that's active. So you have nine workspaces, but it shows you have nine on each monitor, but you really only have nine. So the way it highlights things is a little weird. It's something that I'd have to get used to. I'm, I don't think it's a bug. I think it's just the way it does it. So like I said, the bar has been a pain in my bum for the whole day that I've been using this. And that's going to be a problem because <laughs> I would like to use XMOBAR. I really would. I prefer XMOBAR to Polybar, or I, I think I, I think I would prefer XMOBAR to Polybar, but seeing as how I haven't been able to use it, I don't actually know. I'm hoping that the XMOBAR, oops, I'm hoping that the XMOBAR is similar to something like the, the DWM bar in which I could go through and just, you know, put in a whole bunch of scripts and stuff. Now the Xmo bar uh, configuration file is just the default configuration file. So if I and then I just copied this from the web, and like I said, it still won't work. So may, uh, there's just something I'm doing wrong. I don't. There, there was the error that I showed you earlier. Um, it's possible that. I have something installed wrong or I'm missing a dependency somewhere. Uh, there's something there's something funky going on with the bar with the XMO bar. Uh, and I don't I'm going to continue to use Polybar for now and I'm going to have to go through and theme it, which I think I'm going to end up doing on my stream on Sunday, but we'll see. I'm going to continue to go through and use Xmonad for a while and see if I can get used to it. Now, there are a few things that I still need to add cuz I'm going to need scratch pads. I know I know Xmonad has scratch pad functionality, so I'm going to need to go through and enable that. Uh, and I'm going to go want to go through and probably create a cheat sheet for all the key bindings and stuff so that I can have that someplace easy, maybe even bound to a key binding. So that'd be uh, something that I need to go through and do. So far, like it's, it's been a day and I've had fun. So using a new window manager is very fun, even when it's frustrating. And... I've had fun. I'm not sure I've had enough fun to stick with Xmonad for any length of time. I'm going to have to figure out that Xmo bar thing because that's going to bother me forever, even though I have a bar. Uh, you know, so I'm going to have to figure that out. And if I end up having problems with the scratch pad functionality, I can see that driving me back to DWM fat very fast. Uh, I'm only like two problems away from just scrapping this completely and going back to DWM. So, uh, I will, I'm going to probably create a few more videos over the next few days of my use of Xmonad, kind of d documenting how it's going. As of right now, I could probably take it or leave it. It's not as... Haskell's not as intimidating as I remember it being. So when I first did Xmonad, I was really just getting into real window managers. Like, I'd been using i3 for over a year at that point, and 
<laughs> I don't want to say i3 is not a real window manager, because it is, and it's a good window manager, it's very good, uh, but it's an easy window manager. So I, at that point, I don't even think I ever, at that point, I'm pretty sure I had just installed DWM for the first time, and I'd only been using it for a couple months, and DWM is one of those window managers that is, um, it's harder, right? You have to go through and you actually have to learn things, whereas you can just use i3, right? You don't have to really learn stuff. Uh, so my point was, my point is that when I used Xmonad for the first time, I really hadn't been exposed to a lot of the ideas behind, you know, you, ha you have to go through and look this stuff up in order to actually, you know, figure out how to use stuff. So I don't think Haskell is as intimidating as I thought it was. I still think it's weird. <laughs> There's like some situations where the comma goes at the beginning of the line. And again, I don't understand why that would possibly be. I mean, I'm not a programmer like at all. But a comma at the beginning of the line just seems really odd to me. Yeah, so there's just some little things about that. But it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So, like I said, I'm going to use this. I'm going to hope to use this for a month. Uh, we'll see if that happens. So, uh, thank you for watching. Make sure you follow us on the Twitter. Uh, make sure you follow us on the Twitter at the Linux Cast. You can follow us on the Facebook at the Linux Cast as well. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Early access to videos will be returning tomorrow for those of you who are tier 2, 3, 4, or 5 in Patreon. So make sure if you're interested in doing that, you can go through patreon.com and support us there. Um, and I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks everybody for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.